1989 was kind of an epic year. Not only was it the year the Berlin Wall came down, it was also the year that this bike came out. Now, this bike has seen better days, but some of the things that I really liked about it include, first, that it's kind of cool. It's got an aluminum main triangle made of Easton tubing. In fact, it's an Easton bike. Reflex was an Easton brand, likely made here locally in the Salt Lake area at the Easton factory here in Salt Lake. But it also kind of exemplifies what mountain biking is all about. Um, in the late 70s when mountain biking was just getting started, it was started by guys who were trying to push the limits on what was being done for bikes. They wanted something they could ride in the mountains, on the road, on the fire roads and the hills and they kind of tweaked, tested, tried different things and that's kind of what this bike is all about. It's got this aluminum main triangle with a steel rear triangle lugs and front fork. So it's it's a unique combination of innovation. And because of that, I really, really liked it, was attracted to it. One, the anodized Easton tubing is kind of cool also. It's kind of hard to resist. But the second thing is, this bike was used. N not just meaning that someone used it, but it was used for what it was designed for. This bike, you can tell by the wear, the dirt, the grime, everything about it tells me that the previous owner or owners, I don't know how many have used it, rode this bike in the mountains. They didn't ride this bike just to ride around town or as a commuter. This was a mountain bike and it was used by someone who rode it like a mountain bike, possibly here in the local area. Because of that, this was something I wanted to restore. Now, it wasn't destroyed so badly that it wasn't usable. Um, there's some parts that needed to be replaced. I was lucky actually to find a donor bike in much better condition than this, likely not used on mountain bike trails, with the same component group. So, in cases where the components were worn out, like the the rear shifter, I was able to swap those components off of the donor bike, which was kind of a unique one also. It was the last year that Panasonic made mountain bikes. It's a Panasonic mountain bike. The bike company, it says on it. But that bike frame might become part of another build some other day. And really what needed to be done was disassembly, cleaning up all the grease parts, cleaning off all the grime, cleaning up all the bearings, and re-greasing them. And some parts, like these pedals, though they are still usable, they were some of the things that didn't make the cut, and I took the parts off the donor bike.
when you're doing something like this to a bike, either restoring it or this could be looked at as a complete tune-up, perhaps, it really pays off to just take everything apart that you can. Bottom brackets like this one need to be removed. The bearings need to be cleaned out. The grease needs to be cleaned out so you can replace it with grease that isn't gritty and dirty. And really it means just taking it down to the bare bones, cleaning it all up, and rebuilding it. The day I finished breaking down the frame, I also needed to wash my car, so I brought the frame along and used the pressure washer at the car wash to clean up all the dirt and grit that was on the bike. Now, on this bike, I thought a lot about whether or not I wanted to redo the paint at all. This was one where the, the tubing, one, because it was used, was scuffed up and rusted in a lot of places, especially on the steel. The aluminum had dings and stuff, and because it's aluminum, it didn't rust. But I decided actually to just preserve the existing paint job and to leave it as is, to clean off the rust where I could and just maintain it from now on. A lot of this bike had this red dirt on it. it. Made me wonder if it's been in southern Utah at all. Probably has. Like several of my bikes have. After cleaning up the races, a bit of new grease works wonders. Now, on my last bike video, someone had commented that I was turning the screws the wrong way. Um, and I think they were referring to some of the components, like on the bottom bracket, where the threading is reversed to make sure that the components don't unscrew while you're pedaling. And that is why sometimes it seems like I'm turning things the wrong way. It just depends on which part and where it's being used. Now, when you're setting a bottom bracket here, you want to set it where there's no more play side to side and where the bearings aren't being press too closely. Once you get that, you put this lock nut, I guess you'd call it, on to lock it in place. Nice thing about these old Biopace cranks is that the, they're high enough quality that the chain rings aren't press fit. They're all screwed together. It made it a lot easier to do the cleanup on this. But man, these were greasy and dirty.
brakes were one that I almost went with the brakes from the donor bike. But there really wasn't anything mechanically wrong with them. Same with the derailleur. Besides just being dirty, they were still working great, which tells you the quality of those old Shimano parts. Now, if you noticed, at the beginning, when I was taking the wheels off, I tested the tension on the spokes. They were really quite loose. And this kind of tells me that the initial build on these wheels, even though this bike has been ridden a bunch, though they were true, were probably never tightened all the way down. And so this bike probably should have had, initially, someone actually go through both of the wheels and tension them correctly and then true them. Uh, it probably would have been better for the wheels in the long run. But there wasn't really anything wrong with them. They just needed that truing and cleaning up. And they were good to go. Once cleaning up the wheel and the cassette, it almost surprised me how good they looked cleaned up um, and things were still just fine. It was just a bunch of dirt and grime that was on this, this wheel and on the cassette. Now the tires, this was one where I searched for quite a while trying to find a good pair of gum wall 26 inch mountain bike tires. I didn't want, I, I was able to find some that were like cruiser tires, but I wanted mountain bike tires. This bike is a mountain bike. It was ridden as a mountain bike. I'm not one to take those bikes I, I didn't want to take it away from what it was and turn it into some kind of city cruiser bike with tires that just weren't appropriate for what it was originally designed for. But these Trail King tires from Continental are, are pretty awesome. They're great tires, great price. I'll put a link to them actually in, in the description below because they're such good value tires and the price on Amazon is, is pretty incredible if you're looking for a good pair of 26 inch tires. One of the sad things is it's getting harder and harder to find good 26 inch components for mountain bikes because so many of them now are 27 and a half and 29 inch. And not that there's anything wrong with that it's just there's so many great classic bikes that more and more of the components are going to be difficult to find replacements for. Really, wheels, tires, things like that, rims, are going to be more difficult as time goes on. Those cool old components for 26-inch are going to get rarer and rarer and more difficult. Unless something changes and the industry decides 26-inch is good again. I don't know. One of the other cool things about this bike was this internal cable housing routing. Uh, it meant that I needed to leave at least the cable inside from the original layout so I could pull the new cable housing and then run new cable through it. Um, but it's kind of cool that it had uh, internal cable routing. I don't know how common that was back in the 80s, but it's pretty common now. But during the 90s, early 2000s, it wasn't something you saw very often, though. This is another thing you don't see a whole lot of. Super long stems. <laughs> this stem is, is really long. But it's appropriate for the, the era. It also has routing for the front brake cable.
Now, other than the, the tires, these Ori grips uh, are the other perhaps component that I've added onto this bike that aren't consistent with with the era. Although there were er Ori grips, I believe, in the late 80s being used on BMX bikes. I'm not positive on that, although I have no idea. But that and the tires are kind of, I guess, upgrades and not consistent with what was traditionally used back in Now this was one of the things I'm stoked that are still available. The Salitalia Turbo mountain bike seats from the 80s are awesome. And you can actually still find, they're still manufacturing them. And you can find them in a lot of different places. I bought this one on Amazon and it really complements and finishes off the bike after that old uh, bike gel bike seat which was also a, Italian I think made by Sal Italia also and very much the same design as the turbo the turbo was kind of the iconic seat of the 80s to have on your mountain bike kind of like the flight was in the 90s I really like how this build turned out. Finishing it up here as I put the pedals on and the chain on. I really like what this bike stood for, or it stands for still. The innovation that mountain biking has always had as part of its culture and, and history, and I hope part of its future as we innovate and find new things. I want you guys to remember that giving those old things new life is a testament to our future also. So look for opportunities to give those old things new life. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Ciao.